Who would have guessed they'd be battling for first place here in the Norris Division on this November evening? Looking back at October, and the Leafs off to just a tremendous start. Five wins, three ties, and two losses. However, here in November, things have changed for Toronto with two wins and three losses in a row. John Brophy's not very happy about it either, and you can see the Norris Division is starting to tighten up. And although they're playing for first place tonight, if they continue the current pace, they won't be playing for it for long. Dave Newell, the referee tonight, and with him on the lines will be Wayne Forsey and Dan Shakti. And the goaltenders tonight. Glenn Hanlon starting for Detroit. Alan Bester for Toronto. And we felt that things would break out early this evening. And here she goes after three seconds. Well, you could tell by the starting lineup spot that there was going to be trouble right away. As you know, Detroit gives their starting lineup first. And they started some stormtroopers. Brophy saw that. And he started his stormtroopers. John Burr of Detroit and Brad Smith of the Maple Leafs right off the bat. Jerry Gallant make that. Gerard Gallant. Was slated to start with Iserman and Klima, but he went out there on the line with Burr and Higgins to start the hockey game. And this is one of the results. And Newell goes to work early. Newell doesn't know what's going on behind him here, Bob. And you can see those two guys aren't interested in the start of the game at all. And away they go. So there will be major penalties. Gallant and Smith. And Newell is at the penalty box now, as you can see. We get major penalties early in the hockey game after just three seconds of the first period. There are the goaltenders. Glenn Hanlon, starting for Detroit tonight, came to Detroit from the New York Rangers, his eighth start of the season. Now, he's an exciting goaltender, but not quite as exciting as the guy on the other end, the acrobatic Alan Bester, who gets his fifth start for the Leafs. This time he says he wants to stay badly. Gallant and Smith. Three seconds of the first period. Penalties handed out, and the wings go in there after Toronto. This is I have Brady who is starting away through the middle for Tyrion. He's on with Jackson now. Smith, the right winger on the line with Tyrion and Jackson in the penalty box as is Gallant of Detroit. Higgins from the line tried to clear one in on the net. Goes to the corner. The Red Wings, I'll tell you, Harry, are coming in early in this first period looking for the first goal, which, as you know, is so important in a game like this. It's an amazing stat, the number of teams that win if they get the first goal in this uh, in the National Hockey League. Oser drops it back. Detroit again, shooting it into the lead zone, and Salming, who has been playing well lately, gives it away. It comes to the side of the net. Bester covered up, though, hanging on to the post. And the Maple Leafs start down the right side. That is five, driving for the net. He's carried in on the boards. In back of the goal, the Leafs in after it. Thomas trying to get one over in front of the goal. Vibe comes over to give him a hand. Thomas back to the line, closing in, shoots. That's deflected to the right of Hanlon and into the crowd. Steve Thomas has got a great shot. And that one was labeled for the goal until it hit a defenseman's stick and went up into the seats. And you know, when these two teams are playing for first place tonight, they both are on losing streaks. The coaches don't like each other. I don't think it was much of a surprise that uh, we had it start this way. John Brophy said if Jock Demers sends out Joey Kosher after Boris Salming, he's going to walk over to the Detroit bench and pull Jock Demers' mustache off. There's Jock, who is starting to turn the Detroit team around, that's for sure, as Brophy has done with the Maple Leafs. And you know, I think this is going to be a race 
all the way through the season. I'm not too sure they're going to be playing for first place, but they're going to be battling each other for something important all year long. Detroit now trying to organize again. Coming from his own zone. That's Obratnik to center. Tried a shot as he hit the line. That was blocked. And Fergus steals it. Comes back in for Toronto. Fergus takes the shot. That is blocked in front of the net. Fergus went after it again. In back of the goal, Lee Norwood. Cleared at the length of the ice. Icing is waved off. And Gill goes back there. Tip the pass to Thomas. Thomas rolled it out to the line. Fergus couldn't knock it down. And Vive is going to go back. And it is called the high stick making contact. This is Hockey Night in Canada from Toronto. Smith in the penalty box. Both drawing minor penalties and major to boot as they went right at it after just three seconds. After the puck was dropped at center ice by Dave Newell. The Leafs, three of them come to center. This is Ira Brady, the defenseman up on the play. Dropped it back, a weak shot. It's tipped in wide of the goal, and the Red Wings are going to move it out. Another step was started in front of Lane Hamlin. Lattiser Clark. Lattiser and Wendell Clark, Bob. And Wendell landed a haymaker on the left hand. Clark, a haymaker for sure on Big Lattiser. So they're going to be penalized. We have a Hockey Night in Canada update for you. Let's take a moment and go to Dave Hodge. The Montreal Canadiens are on the power play and quickly on the scoreboard as Matt Naslin cleanly beats Mike Ramsey and puts the puck in. In the second minute of play, Canadians lead Buffalo 1-0. And for the Sabres, here we go again. It's going to be a tough, tough time for the Sabres to pick it up. Not a good place to start tonight at the Forum in Montreal. Five minutes for fighting. Major Toronto again. penalty to number 17, Wendell Clark. Two minutes for instigating. Uh -huh. Five minutes for fighting. Clark gets the Time extra minor. Earlier in this in the shift before the fight started, Lattiser and Clark were jousting in front of the net, and they decided that that wasn't enough. And I guess Clark must have taken the first punch, or in Newell's opinion, he did, and he gets the extra two minutes. So naturally, Brophy not happy, but the Red Wings will have the man advantage. The instigator was Clark. For that, a minor penalty, two minutes. And then, of course, he got the major for fighting with Lattiser. Detroit's 19th in the league on their power play, and they'll be facing the Leafs' penalty-killing unit, which is number one. And Allison is a reason why, number eight. So is Tyrion, number seven. They're both out there now for the Maple Leafs. Klima, the leading scorer with the Red Wings at this point. He has 12 goals and five assists. He's number 85, and he's on the ice. Heiserman is 19. It's fired in by O'Connell. Klima misses it. The Leafs knock it out to center ice. This is a chance for Allison. He picked it off neatly, and there's going to be a penalty here to the Detroit Red Wings. Mike O'Connell had to hook him. Peter Klima gave the puck away at the blue line. And O'Connell came back and had had the hook. I think it was O'Connell. Well, I guess I'm wrong. Lee Norwood had to hook him. And I don't think that Allison was going to get a real chance on goal there. He was being caught. But I think you're going to see Dave Newell call everything for a while here, Bob, to try and calm these teams down. Well, he kind of got unnerved when he dropped the puck in at center ice, as you said, Harry. He didn't know what was happening behind him. Brad Smith and Gallant were going at it. The puck was about two inches out of his hand when the fight started. Burgess is 19 for the Maple Leafs. And Iserman. 19 for Detroit. No score, three minutes gone, first period. Leafs have three in the penalty box. The Red Wings, three in the penalty box. And the Red Wings have to back up a little bit now. Pass to the left side near center. Flipped in by Chason. Detroit after it, into the corner, and back of the net at center, comes out. And that quick shot, and Lester makes the first big save, I think, of the game, as O'Connell got an opportunity from about 30 feet. Was a good stop. Bester took it with his uh, blocker. 
And you're going to see the puck squirt out to O'Connell. He shoots it. I don't know whether Alan Bester could see all of that, but he saw enough of it to get his hand in the road, and then he recovered. I Certain said the first, sorry, Harry, the first big stop of the game, actually the first stop of the hockey game. But as you say, it was a good save. Steve Eiserman, who played the last shift there, was kind of a doubtful starter. He hurt his ribs in Philadelphia, and there was some question as to whether he could start. But I guess he's all right. Marin to go, and he's playing very well for Detroit this year, Bob, after not so good a year last year. No score. Leafs have yet to get a shot at Hanlon. Eiserman against Burgess. Burgess winning the draw. Boy, is he sharp on faceoffs, especially in his own end. Burgess, 19 for Toronto. Puck flipped to center ice. Chase on, tried to lug it back in, and five. Tomley took it away from it, didn't know he had it. Stayed it by the puck. Made the big circle, and the Leafs go back. Kotsopoulos around the net. Fergus twisting and turning. So was Vibe. It'll be Fergus giving it to Vibe, and he has a bit of room now. Vibe trying to find some room on the boards. Can't find it. Chase on. Played him well. Took the body right in along the boards. Heiserman tried to stick handle by Vibe. It didn't get very far. Now on a second attempt, he had it knocked back by Vibe. Snaps got the puck ahead. The Leafs get going in, shoots, and Hanlon makes his first stop of the hockey game as Gill showing a good burst of speed, breaking away. Back in his beach for Detroit. He's bumped on the board. And again, the Leafs back to cover up. Gill's pass out across the line. Cut back near center as Portnell went in. Detroit will have an opportunity to clear it. He fades back. So the play is called no score. And Sean Burr has been uh, really one of Detroit's best players. Uh, uh, first round draft pick in 1984. Went back and played two years junior after he was drafted. Played last year in the family, in the Calder Cup playoffs with Adirondack as they won the Calder Cup. And this year has been given the assignment by Jock Demers of checking the other team's big line. And he's done a masterful job at it. He kills penalties for Detroit and he has six goals so that he's done everything or more than they possibly expected so early in the season and i think he's going to be a good hockey player for some years to come for the detroit Red Wings. at this point the maple leaves have the man advantage norwood has 20 seconds left in his penalty Clement trying to burst in there balls to the ice as he was checked by solving and the leaks two of them up the center pass ahead by lehman that does not work and it's chopped away by Sean Burr. Four seconds from now, Norwood will be back on the ice. And Detroit has the puck coming in. O'Connell's long, low shot misses. Detroit. And O'Connell backs again. So they're even once more, and Klima has the puck back of the net. Klima tried to center it. It's deflected by McGill, and behind the Maple Leaf goal again. Lehman starts away to Cordnello left it. Salmi from center. Long shot, easy save for Hamlin. During the six minute mark of the opening period. And no score. Detroit starting up again. This is Michael Connell dumping it in for the Red Wings. Bester out of the net, leaving it there. And Cordnello goes back to the goal. Tried to kick it loose. Over in the far corner, Adam Oates tried to set it up back near the line. And three leaks get out. Up the center, that's Lehman trying to go in. Lehman. Couldn't get by Chase on. Now he centers it. Here's a chance for Gill again. Shot. That's off the stick of Hanlon. Thomas lost control of it, and the Red Wings get it out of the zone. Skating up the center ice. Oates played it in, and the long shot from the left wing is wide. And the league's five, trying to bring it out. He'll get it up the center to Thomas. Thomas shot. And Hanlon stopped that. A good hard shot, though, by Thomas. The Red Wings clear the zone as they near the seven-minute mark. A period number one and still no score. Five falls to the ice. Red Wings come back out. Not very far with that play. And a chance for Burgess. In. Stop. High shot. Rob Burgess. And he's been hot for Toronto. Rob Burgess with a great wrist shot. Watch him put it right up over Hanlon's shoulder here. While he's under a little duress from the Detroit defenseman, Beach. A perfect shot. You can see it was a wrist shot, no big wind up. And that's probably why he scored the goal. 
Uh, I'm not sure you can blame Glenn Hannon on that one. Tom Fergus. Let's see if you can stop this one, folks. This is a bullet. And Chris Patsopoulos, time 6.24. 6.24, the opening goal in the game. And that's Fergus 12th on the season. Gill and Katsopoulos got assists on that goal. Beautiful shot by Ferguson. Now Dan Poos is in, trying to set it up in front. And couldn't quite do it. In on the boards. Dan Poos trying to get it loose. At the far side, your M. Chuck, number 16. Couldn't rip it out in front. The back end for Detroit. Higgins along the boards was knocked to the ice. Allison won't catch up to it. Maybe he will. Nope, snaps, cut him off at the pass, near center. One to nothing, Toronto. They're in the eighth minute of the play in the first period. The Red Wings, Eiserman near center, in with Klima. He tapped it ahead for Klima, and Salming was watching his every move. Leaves just flip it out of the zone. Snaps back to Beach. Beach, a rink-wide pass. Allison has his man Klima covered, and he couldn't pick it up. Higgins lost it. Red Wings again move it in. Bester will cover this one off the boards. 1-0 Toronto. Fergus got the goal. Beautiful high shot over the right shoulder of Hanlon. Makes the win there again. Jackson was knocked down. Detroit clearing the zone. I have Brady backs up a bit. A pass across the two lines. And it's called live on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada. Well, just one shot so far. Hanlon five. One of them went in. Fergus, the only goal. Cardinal coming up. Started it a bit high and went into the spectators at the far side to the left of Glenn Hanlon. And they've now played eight minutes in the first period. There's Jock Demers, and he's very disturbed at the number of goals Detroit have given up in the last two games. Five against New Jersey and seven against Philadelphia. And he took great pride in having the Red Wings in number two position in goals against about ten days ago. And Harry, both coaches should be a little bit disturbed about goals four. The league's 48 and Detroit only 47. Well, both teams have a strange statistic. Uh, Detroit, 31 out of their 47 goals scored by four players. And Toronto, 31 out of their 48 goals scored by four players. Leafs just a little better than three goals a game. And I think you'll agree that in today's hockey, that's not quite enough. You're not going to win as often as you'd like scoring three a night. Lehman goes in. Took a shot. And juggling that one was Hanlon. And he had a little trouble hanging on to it, but he did. Well, I believe chances are very short tonight. Well, I don't know about Jock Demers, but I know John Brophy has been a miserable guy to live with since the Leafs embarked on this three-game losing streak. Here's the shot that Hanlon handles. He seems to lose it for a minute, but there's no traffic. And he catches it before any Leaf gets close enough to cause him any trouble. Glenn Hanlon, supposed to come in as the backup goalie, has really been their number one guy as far as how he's played this year. He leads the league in goals against. There's Sean Burr, number 11.